For any organization, crisis arises for a multitude of causes, such as corporate misbehavior, man-made disasters, workplace violence, and so on. For Samsung, it came in the form of product explosion. Regarding the background of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7 explosion, in 2016, Samsung was set to meet the public demand in high-end technology smartphones with the launch of the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Samsung Electronics released the Galaxy Note 7 in 10 countries on August 19th, which saw a huge success in sales at first. Although so, the Note 7 eventually caught fire in South Korea on August 24, a case which Samsung took lightly, suggesting users to use original chargers when charging the phone. But then, several more explosions occurred in late August where Samsung finally took action by recalling the Note 7 and suspending sales in 10 countries. Although so, China was not involved with the recall, which caused upset from Chinese consumers. Eventually, the so-called safe Note 7 in China also exploded on September 18th. And then, the replacement Note 7 also caught fire on an Southeast Airlines flight, causing airlines to ban the device due to safety concerns. Given Samsung's business and reputation, on October 10th, Samsung issued a second recall and barred all sales, asking customers to return both the Note 7 and the replacement devices for a refund or another Samsung model, which were to be the Galaxy S7 and Galaxy S7 Edge. This also with the cost difference compensation. But then finally on October 11th, Samsung discontinued production for the Galaxy Note 7. Next, we also analyzed the good and bad practices in crisis management by Samsung. First of all, Samsung showed good manner to hold press conferences in addressing the problem. Samsung Electronics conducted a news conference on September 2nd, 2016, and at the conference, Samsung Mobile President Ko Dong Jin gave a speech to address the public regarding the problem. Mr. Ko apologized profusely for the explosion and announced that Samsung will recall 2.5 million of its Galaxy Note 7 smartphones. Next, Samsung was also quick to issue an app update to handle the problem while the recall program was in process. Samsung's app update can help users who haven't returned their phone to avoid overheating and exploding. After installing this app update, users can use their phones while waiting for the recall. And finally, Samsung was also quick in making the decision to shut down the Note 7 production after the situation seemed to be harmful for both consumers and the welfare of the Samsung company itself. Although so, Samsung also had bad practices to their crisis management. First of all, um, Samsung's initial crisis response was weak. Unpreparedness for emergencies hindered Samsung's response to the Galaxy Note issue. Samsung chose a wait-and-see strategy to the initial explosion in Korea, losing the ability to manage the situation well. When Samsung ignored the exploding phone warnings, it set up its next crisis. Next, Samsung did not prioritize honesty when addressing the issue with customers. Initially blaming consumers' misuse, Samsung then said uh, the problem was a battery compartment design flaw. This may portray the company as to be dishonest with customers. And finally, Samsung's mistreatment on Chinese consumers was a very ter terrible strategy since it displays the company's lack of customer service. Customers in China were understandably furious with Samsung, and this mistake might lead to a boycott of Samsung's products. Thank you, Alfan. Now, I'm going to talk about analyzing and comparing Samsung Galaxy Note 7 explosion, explosion crisis with Seagull 2006 crisis communication practice guideline. The first one is process approaches and policy development. To mitigate the damage caused by the PR crisis, Samsung developed its own crisis management strategies. This section focuses on Samsung's major strategies for dealing with the explosion incident, as well as some recommendations based on an analysis of those strategies. This action match the best practices of crisis communication. The second one is pre-event planning. Regarding Samsung's incident, there was no planning made beforehand as they never expected such incidents would occur. This contradicts the best practice of crisis communication by Seagull 2006. Only after the crisis, Samsung found the cause for the incidents. This shows how Samsung does not have critical requirements and does not pay close attention to quality inspection and potential hazards in their quality control. The third one is partnership with public. In the Samsung, Samsung Galaxy Note 7 explosion incident, their action contrasts from what's best practice in crisis communication. Instead of immediately communicating with Chinese users, Samsung insisted that the Note 7 sold in China is safe and suspected that the, the exploding incident was caused by the customer's improper use, generating much negative press about Samsung in China. 
The fourth one is listen to public's concerns and understand the audience. Samsung initially didn't pay enough attention to this issue, encouraging buyers to use the original charger and remain away from the phone when charging. At the end of August, many explosions happened again and Samsung began to solve the issue. Samsung's inadequate response defies Seager's 2006 crisis communication practice and guidelines. The fifth one is honesty, candor and openness. Samsung follows the Seager 2006 best practice and guideline by revealing the truth because the public anticipated it after the crisis resolved. The sixth is collaborate and coordinate with credible sources. After the Federal Aviation Administration banned the Note 7 from all flights in the United States, the four major carriers, AT&T, Sprint, T-Mobile and Verizon, stopped selling and exchanging the device. This displays Samsung's acceptance toward the decision made and collaborated with them to seize all the sales of the phone. These cooperative relationships enable agency, agencies to better coordinate their messages and activities. The seventh is meet the needs of the media and remain accessible. Samsung displayed the opposite value in this regard. After being put under pressure by the public, Samsung finally started to take action to address the exploding problem. Samsung held a press conference in Seoul on September 2nd issuing a recall of the Galaxy Note 7. Number eight is communicate with compassion, concern and empathy. President of Samsung Mobile, Mr. Koh, bowed in apology for the exploding incident at the conference and stated that Samsung would recall the 2.5 million Note 7 devices it had sold, demonstrating the company's resolve to solve the serious problem. These characteristics significantly improve the message credibility and the messenger's perceived legitimacy both before and after an event. The public reacts much more positively when spokesperson acknowledge their concerns and show human compassion for any harm that has occurred. Number 9 is Accept Uncertainty and Ambiguity Samsung clearly lacks this value as they did not include the Chinese market in the first round recall plan and unluckily a Note 7 sold in China exploded. On October 5th, the replacement phone caught fire on Southwest Airlines flight escalating the problem. Many airlines have banned Note 7 from their flights due to safety concerns. And lastly, messages of self-efficacy. Self Samsung's way of showing this value is delivering messages of self-efficacy by halting all sales and issuing a second recall, asking customers to return both the Note 7 and the replacement devices in exchange for a refund or another Samsung model. That is all for my part. On to the next presenter. So what are the outcomes of Samsung's PR crisis strategies? So while Samsung took immediate efforts to deal with the Note 7 disaster, the results were far from satisfactory. Samsung's sales performance in China was crashing down. The market share trailed far behind the competitors. Customers were still unsatisfied with the company's response, which um, negatively impacted the brand's image. And also, Samsung shows lack of preparation for the unprecedented disaster. Samsung's double standard approach also caused a quick plunge in Samsung's market share. Chinese media and customers completely criticized Samsung for treating the explosion issue with double standards. Samsung gained a terrible image in the Chinese market for focusing solely on business profits and completely ignoring the safety measures. So how can Samsung improve their PR crisis management? First, improve their crisis awareness. A gigantuan giant company like Samsung must always anticipate tragedies like this. The company will be able to foresee a possible catastrophe early on and take urgent action to prevent it from occurring or getting it worse. Next, Samsung should treat their customers equally. Samsung made a huge mistake when they're letting down their Chinese customers with their double standards approach. So this situation has made them suffer a huge loss in the Chinese market. So Samsung should take good care of their customers and make them feel respected and valued in order to regain their trust. Other than that, Samsung needs to improve their quality control. Quality control is the company's essential component of success. It must be at the top level. So we all know that high quality products are important for companies' long-term growth. Therefore, Samsung's quality control procedure needs to be enhanced, needs to be improved in order to avoid such an incident or tragedy like this. Finally, Samsung needs to improve their relationship with press or media. So Samsung needs to realize that they have to deliver only facts to the public. It is important to combat the spread of misleading news or fake news. 
It is because positive relationship with the news media is so important for a company's success. Samsung may gain favorable exposure not just by working closely with the news media, but also by taking the initiative to handle and manage the news when a crisis occurs.